Well, hey guys, what is up? What's going on out there today? Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another episode of What's the Right Shot? And what I've got for you today is a, a detailed breakdown of an aggressive second serve, chip and charge, return of serve. I've got 10 steps, 10 things here that um, if you wanna, if you wanna be able to do this, work on these 10 things. And you know, 10 is a big number, but in reality, um, it's, it's not gonna take you a, a ton of time to be able to duplicate what I'm, what I'm showing you here. So let's go through the 10 steps. And by the way, at the end of this, I've, I've got a little keynote, uh, little notes list I wanna get to you that will list out the 10 steps that you can, just a PDF file that you can download and uh, stick it in your racket bag and take it out there and practice. So look, step one is mindset. It's a second serve, right? And you've decided that you've, and I'm not saying that you can do this against an unknown server first time, first game that they return because you got to go to school, right? You've got to go to school on this guy's second serve, get a feel for what are his tendencies uh, in, in terms of where does he like to play a second serve to you? Um, you know, really, what's the quality of it? And so I, I won't do this until, you know, somewhere I somewhere in the match where I've had a little bit of time to go to school on this guy's second serve and, and have some kind of good idea of what's coming in. So thing one is going to be a full commitment. It's a mindset thing. You've decided after going to school on this guy, okay, I think I know what's coming. Um, yeah, never ever guarantee, but it's a full-blown commitment to chipping and charging. It's not a partial commitment to going, well, let me see what he throws in there, and then if I think I can do it, I'll go ahead and, and, and sort of chip it back cross court, and maybe I'll see what the quality of that chip is, and then maybe I'll come in has nothing to do with that. It has to do with a full-blown, you know what, I've decided I'm going to play a chip and charge. And no matter what, whatever the serve is, and if that partner moves, okay, I'm coming in. So that's thing one. Look, step two is, is for me, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I do, is that as that server over there is, is gathering himself, bouncing the ball a few times, I'm over here checking, I'm consciously making sure that my hands are relaxed on the handle. I don't want to have any grip tension at all because when you've got grip tension, as you're going to see in step number five, is it's problematic. So I want to make sure, I do this every stinking time, I make sure that my hands are soft. I feel that right now. Step three is I got to visually locate the ball. Right, right now, I'm I'm looking at at this guy bouncing the ball, I'm not looking at him. All I'm trying to do right now is get a visual lock on the tennis ball. And once he starts his motion, I'm still looking at the ball in his hand. I'm watching it go up, right, and and I'm just completely completely locked on it because I feel like I get a quicker read of the direction if if I start looking at the tennis ball eagle eye in the tennis ball as he's as he's as he's going through his tossing motion right step forward is the forward step this is the full-blown commitment i'm gonna put myself into this part of the court right sort of halfway not really totally halfway but you know in between the baseline and the service line for a couple of reasons number one is i want to take time away from that server. I want to be up to net faster than he is or sooner than he is. And look, this guy's good. This guy's a good player. So I'm assuming it's going to come back. That's okay. And my partner and I will just deal with whatever does come back. But I want to take his time away because a couple good things happen. Number one is it's a higher quality shot based on your court position. Look, I'm not saying that, that this isn't a, a solid chip uh, chip down to his feet, but if you stay back here as you as you hit a quality chip or a quality slice, it doesn't have the same effect on that server um, as if you're doing what you see here, which is saying, all right, man, 
I'm assuming you're going to be able to play this ball back somewhere. And if it comes back to me, that's okay. I'll just take it from there. But I want you to have to really make sure that, that you execute this thing perfectly. And lots of times this is what happens. They just kind of bail out looking for who knows what. Um, but, and then thing two is going to be when I step forward, I just kind of feel like, well, let me back it up here. When you step forward in this position, I just like, I like the feeling of the forward momentum of committing to playing a full blown chip and charge. And, and now it's just a, it's just a mental, mental confident thing. Um, of being able to step forward. So let's go on to, um, which is really important here, step five. And step five goes back to the soft hands. The way that you react to the direction of the incoming serve is with your shoulders. We don't think about the old school thing, which is racket back. What you want to feel with your soft hands here is that it's a shoulder turn to prep for the backhand. Right. And and if you've got strong hands, if you're grippy on the handle, if you're tight on the grip, you don't get into a full turn. Your body just doesn't allow you to do that. So do we need to be strong on the grip at any point other than at contact? Well, the answer is no, you don't need to be. And in fact, at contact, I don't like to be strong. I, I just feel like if if I get too strong in the grip at contact, you know what happens? It deadens the ball, and it doesn't get the same kind of what you're going to see here in just a second here, compression. The ball doesn't compress against the string bed as well. At least I feel. That's, that's what I feel. So, look, as you, as, you, as you determine the direction of the incoming serve, you got to prep the racket from the shoulders. You don't go, you don't go racket back. The next part of this, this is step number six, thing number six, is spacing, right? So you've seen, all right, backhand, I'm turning, and now you got to move the feet enough to make sure that the ball is to your side, right? It's one thing to turn, but if you don't create the space that you need, the spatial distance away from the path of that incoming serve, it's going to eat you up. And look, I love this serve. I mean, I, I would take this all day long. Good depth, it's at the body. But if you've got a returner who's willing to create space with the feet and allow that ball to get to your side where, right, that's where we play contact is to the side, is not right at us, um, then, then this, is, this is what you want to do with step number six, which is, which is spacing, right? Now, look. Step seven is racket prep. You don't need to wrap this thing around your body. You don't need to go racket back, as I said before. And in fact, all I feel like is I want to prep the racket face behind the eventual point of contact. I don't need any more than that, right? You're using the pace of, of, of the ball coming off the court to put itself into your racket. You're also using your ability to sort of move against the ball slightly to create enough pace for this for this chip. You don't need anything, you don't need anything more than than that. So I like to prep the racket just behind the eventual point of contact. All right. Number eight is what happens at contact. Well for me, what's really crucial is that you leave your head, you leave your eyes right there at contact, and you don't go into the peaking, P-E-E-K, where so many players, and I used to do this, and I drill this all the time to make sure that I don't do it, which is right about here, we start to pick the eyes up, start to pick the head up, and start looking at the landscape, number one, to see, well, are those players still there? And then number two, I mean, where they, where, 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 where you think they are, and and then you start to want to make sure that you get <laughs> you get visual confirmation of where your shot's going and that just that's just a recipe for you know an unforced error a miss hit so you need to really practice um, step number eight a lot which is at contact head down eyes down no peeking no looking out the landscape trusting that this will 
be, be what you want, that you don't need to get that visual confirmation. When you get good at this, you can actually feel, you can feel the ball at contact exactly the direction, the height, the quality, and all that stuff. You don't need visual, don't need visual confirmation for it. So um, step nine is a really short finish, right? Because if you go into, this is a chip, it's not a slice. I know they're both underspin, but the slice to me really sort of connotates more of a longer, a longer finish swing, right? It's more of a ground stroke. This isn't. This is a, a short, compact finish. I won't call it a block because you are... And look, the underspin is really coming more from the grip, which is more the continental. It's not a total high to low hack, right? It's just... It's a really compact finish. And the compact finish for me, as I go back to it, allows the ball to compress against the string bed. And when it compresses and it sort of rebounds back to the regular shape, that's, that's, that's a lot of power right, right, right there. And then number 10 is still the full-blown commitment to moving forward. Right? I mean, you've just decided that part of the, the, the quality of this chip is the charge part. And the charge part is, is, is making this guy over there feel like, man, I got both of this. I got both the returning players, if not up at net, moving up at net. I got to hit an even better shot. Right? If you stay back on this return, you can hit the greatest quality ball. But if they know they've got that entire cross-court lane wide open. They just got to shove it in over there because you're staying back. They're going to do that all day long. You want to make them feel that um, they got to go for something big. I'm not saying that they won't, you know, and if I'm in this situation as a server, look, I'm just going, okay, uh, I'm just going to either going to lob over the returner's partner maybe off this, or I'm just going to just slow and low back to that returner, kind of return the favor at their feet. Not, not an easy thing to do. So look, here's what I've got coming up for you right now. Hang in there because I want to give you my keynote notes on this, uh, the 10 steps. I'll go through them real quick with you. And then if you want to get the PDF version of my notes, you're more than welcome to. There is a link down below in the, uh, in the description area. Just go ahead and click it and, um, and you, will get, you will get access to it. All right, here come those notes. Well, all right, guys, I want to get you my notes here on the 10 steps that make you literally armed and dangerous on this doubles, the aggressive chip and charge return of serve. So uh, let's get to it. I'm going to go through each one of the 10 steps quickly, uh, but the download link for these notes uh, is down below and it is in the uh, description area. Just go ahead and click it and you will get access to these notes. I encourage you to somehow put it in your tennis bag, either keep it on your phone or maybe print this out, put it in your bag so that you've got a reference to it and uh, you can get out there and work on this stuff. So let's get star started. Step one is the mindset, right? You are fully 100 committed uh, to moving in. This is not kind of maybe sort of. This is 100% you're going to move through this ball um, and try to take time away from that opponent, right, from that server. Because your court position after you play this shot is, is another layer of a degree of difficulty for, uh, for you executing this shot. Step two, soft hands on the racket as that server is gathering himself over there before they uh, start their tossing motion. Step three, eyes are locked on the ball before they're tossed. You're not looking at them. You are locked eagle eyes on the tennis ball because that's what you need to react to, right? Once that ball leaves the server's racket, you got to be able to have your, your visual uh, acuity already on the tennis ball. Step forward, step four, yeah, literally. Step forward into a split step so that you can react to the direction of the incoming serve. Step five, absolutely crucial. You're going to turn your shoulders, not racket back. Your racket will go back when you turn your shoulders, but you got to get sideways to the path of this incoming, of this incoming serve. Step six is spacing, right? You got to get your feet to help you get the ball to your side. You don't want to. I mean, look when I'm when I play against someone who loves to chip and charge, I want to serve right at them 
because unless they've got great footwork to create that space, lots of times that serve just kind of eats them up when you know when they want to play that when they want to play that chip and charge. Step seven, racket prep behind the eventual contact point. You don't need to get this racket wrapped around you. And in fact, I like to leave it just a foot or two behind what's going to be the eventual contact point because the timing gets a little tricky, right? The ball, the serves bouncing up out of that service box. You're taking it early. You don't want a long swing to have to get to the ball. You want it prepped right behind that contact point. Step eight for me is like, huge, right? No peeking. No premature peeking before contact, looking out in the landscape, wondering what's going to happen out there with your shot. You got to be confident. And, you know, one of my subscribers once called this the fed head, right? How Roger keeps his eyes and head still through contact, doesn't peek, doesn't look up. You want to practice this so that it feels, it feels comfortable for you. Step nine is a short finish. This is not a longer slice type of finish, like let's say a slice backhand from the baseline where you've got a longer follow through out towards the target. This is a short finish. I like to feel like the ball compresses against the strings by leaving the racket head there for a nanosecond, but it's a short little finish. Step 10, back to step one, which is fully 100% committed to moving in with the condition that, look, that guy's good over there. So your return's probably coming back because they're good. That's okay. You and your partner will just take it from there. So hope this has been helpful. Look, down below, there's a link um, if you want to if you want to get a copy of these notes. And again, I highly encourage you to do that. Stick it on your phone so you've got a reference that when you go out to practice that you can go through each one of these steps and, uh, and, and or just go ahead and print it out in, and put it in your, in your tennis bag. Look, any questions, any comments, any remarks, let me know. Uh, Brent at webtennis.com. Get out there now. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Guys, see you again next time.